Hi, so today a video about diverticulitis. So before we start, I invite you to watch my other videos on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is dedicated uh, to natural health, how to heal naturally, and especially how to heal the gut naturally. Um, if you haven't yet, I really recommend that you read uh, the book of uh, Weston A. Price, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, if you are interested in natural health, and especially if you are interested in the, in the link between health and diet. And I also recommend that you use natural remedies uh, rather than using chemical drugs because chemical drugs never address the root cause of your disease. Chemical drugs only hide your symptoms and cause um, more issues on the long run. Um, of course, uh, I, I can tell you to not follow the advice of your GI doctor, so please do. <laughs> but yeah, this is my opinion about natural remedies and uh, chemical drugs. Uh, I have a website, uh, thecandidaslayer.com, that uh, I also invite you uh, to check out. Um, I have a blog with several articles about natural health, and I also have a course on how to heal your gut naturally. I will put the link under this video in the description box. So diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So we will talk about the difference, what it is, and then we will talk about the symptoms um, and the cause of these diseases, these diseases, and uh, how to heal naturally. So, um, diverticulosis basically is when you have these little pouches forming in your colon. So you can have diverticulosis anywhere in your digestive tract, but usually uh, you will get problems uh, mostly in your colon and especially in the last part of your colon, this part here, uh, the descending left colon and the sigmoid colon. Uh, usually it's in this area. It's more than 65% of the people who have um, diverticulosis and diverticulitis that um, they, they have the, the issues here. Okay, so diverticulosis means that you have, um, you have these pouches. It doesn't mean anything else. It means you have these pouches. Uh, but it doesn't mean you have symptoms and usually you don't have symptoms unless it gets inflamed okay and when it gets inflamed um, that's what is called diverticulitis okay itis means inflammation okay so why would that get inflamed um, well it's usually because of irritation Inflammation is caused by irritation, by uh, by a tissue that is injured, okay? And it's it's caused by an accumulation of uh, feces uh, and or of uh, fibers uh, or, you know, food particles, undigested for food particles in these pouches, okay? Um, so, usually you have these issues in this part of the colon because that's where the stool accumulates okay before getting evacuated this your stool will accumulate here and in this last part of the colon that's where your stool will have um the the least um hydration okay that's where your stool will get will be drier rather than in the beginning of the colon okay so because your stool accumulates here and gets drier uh, then that's why this part of the colon is more susceptible to have issues because the more it accumulates, the more it will um, uh, put pressure on your um, colon and the more it will irritate your colon. Okay. So what are the symptoms of diverticulitis? So um, Again, diverticulitis is when you have an inflammation. If you have an inflammation, you uh, might have an infection. Okay, so you will have bloating and gas, and you will uh, have a, a, a bigger um, a belly. Uh, you will have uh, pain mainly on the left side, and because as we saw, it's usually in this area. So you will have pain on the left side of your abdomen you will have fever and nausea if you have the infection uh, and you will have um, diarrhea or constipation or both so these are the main symptoms 
What are the causes? So the main causes of most gut issues are chemical drugs for several reasons. First, um, drugs like um, steroids or anti-inflammatory drugs. One of their numerous side effects is that they cause diverticulitis. So actually, when they give you these drugs to stop the pain, they can actually make it worse. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's what happens, uh, you know, very often with chemical drugs. They cause even more issues than the issue you had at first. Um, another reason is uh, antibiotics. Okay, um, antibiotics, uh, you know, destroy your gut flora uh, and destroy your ability to digest correctly. And by destroying your gut flora, it destroys, you know, those little microbes. Which job is to help you absorb nutrients and also to repair your gut lining okay so if you destroy your gut flora basically you destroy your gut uh, you know so this is something very bad with antibiotics also amongst um, chemical drugs you have ppis you know uh, proton pump inhibitors that are called also anti-acids um, that your doctor will give you if you have GERD, you know, uh, heartburn, gastritis. Um, so it will stop the pain, but it will actually, you know, stop the production of um, acid in your stomach. So this is why it will stop the pain. But by, you know, stopping the production of acid, then you, you won't be able to digest correctly your food. And if you dig don't digest your food properly, uh, you will have food particles traveling all through your digestive system to your colon, irritating your digestive system all along, okay? So anyway, there are other drugs, but you know, all chemical drugs will cause um, some issues to your uh, digestive system and, you know, to your general health. Um, processed foods, you know, junk food, processed foods are a big problem also because they are you know, full of chemicals. Here also you have tons of chemicals. Uh, you have preservatives, synthetic dyes, uh, and so many bad stuff. So uh, just be aware that preservatives are antibiotics, actually, and because the job of preservatives is to, um, you know, um, to, to, to make these products last longer on the shelf of your supermarket. And, you know, it's by eliminating germs, okay? Anyway, so when you eat these foods, you eat uh, preservatives and it's like if you eat uh, antibiotics, you know, and all those other chemicals that really um, wreak havoc in the balance of your gut microbiome um, and your nervous system and, and so on. Uh, it's also full of sugar and full of, um, of uh, vegetable oils. Uh, that are toxic. Uh, we will detail the sugar point in uh, another slide. And I have a whole article about the dangers of vegetable oils in my blog on my website. So I invite you to uh, check this article out. I will put the link of this article under this video. Uh, if you have gastritis, if you have issues with your stomach or with your liver, then you will, you won't digest your food properly and then you will have issues you know with the lower digestive system okay if your upper digestive system is broken you know it will injure your lower digestive system we will detail that in another slide if you have constipation constipation is a big cause of diverticulitis because as we said uh, the more stool accumulates in your colon the more pressure uh, it will put on your colon on the on, on your colon uh, um, mucosa and it will aggravate your di diverticulitis and it will you know irritate even more uh, your um, your colon um, smoking and drinking alcohol uh, hurt your digestive system you know they both irritate your digestive system and stress also is really bad for your digestive system. So you know that uh, when you stress a lot, uh, when you have any kind of stress, usually you can feel it in your uh, stomach, in your gut. You know, you will get bloated, uh, you will have pain, you will uh, have diarrhea, you will have gas uh, and, and so on. So uh, how to heal uh, diverticulitis uh, naturally? So number one, eliminate chemicals from your environment 
Okay, this would be the first thing to do. As we said, chemical drugs will cause many issues. Uh, but before stopping your drugs, of course, talk to your doctor. You cannot, uh, you know, if you are taking drugs on, you know, long term for any kind of chronic disease, um, please don't stop your drugs, you know, cold turkey. Um, talk to your physician and, um, you know, see with, with him or her how you can stop these drugs or, you know, wean them off, okay? Uh, eat organic. Eat organic food uh, to avoid chemicals in your food, you know, chemicals like glyphosate, but all, also other herbicides and pesticides and, and fungicides and stuff like that. Um, you might know that glyphosate, before, you know, being this famous herbicide, was patented as an antibiotic, Okay, so if you eat food that was um, spread with glyphosate, it's like you eat antibiotics. So choose organic or even better, learn, uh, learn the, the, the wild edible plants. Okay, and go forage your own food in nature. That would be the best thing you can do. Uh, and then eliminate all processed foods from your diet. Uh, number two, eliminate foods that irritate your gut, okay? All these foods irritate your gut. Uh, so, um, you have diverticulitis because your colon is inflamed, okay? So, again, uh, let me go back to this picture. You have diverticulitis because your colon membrane is inflamed, as we said earlier, it's because it's irritated. It's irritated because of the accumulation of your stool, putting pressure in your colon, and also because your stool is dry and irritating your uh, your colon. And maybe also because your, your diet is not good, you don't give the right nutrients to your body so it can repair itself. Maybe it's because of stress, everything we saw. But what is inflammation? I actually have a video about inflammation that explains what is inflammation and why inflammation is good. Inflammation is how your body repairs itself, okay? So inflammation is not a problem. The problem is what causes inflammation, okay? Um, so um, anyway, uh, let's go back. So yeah, so the goal is to stop inflammation. So all of these things we will see, you know, they inflame your gut, you know? So uh, chemicals inflame your gut and uh, these things here uh, also inflame that is to say, irritate your gut. So food intolerances. Know your food intolerances. Um, you know, it, it, it's very different between a, a, food, a food allergy and food intolerance. Okay, a food allergy, you will have, the, you know, like quite severe symptoms right away after eating that food. Whereas food intolerance is much harder uh, to uh, detect because you will have the symptoms hours after eating that food. So that's why I, I really recommend that you do uh, a blood test for food intolerances, not a finger prick test. These ones don't work, neither the, uh, the hair uh, test. No, you want to find a lab that will, you know, uh, test several tubes of your blood. Okay. Then when you know your food intolerances, you eliminate these foods for as long as it takes to heal your gut. It can take several weeks, it can take several months. Let's say if you are intolerant to eggs, then you stop eating eggs completely for several weeks or several months and until you heal your gut. And then when your gut is healed, you will see that you are not intolerant to this food anymore. Okay, but this is very important because as long as you eat your food intolerances, it will um, irritate, it will inflame your gut. Okay, so again, number one, we want to avoid inflammation, to avoid irritation. Um, uh, processed foods, we already uh, detailed this point. Um, uh, grains, you know, and especially gluten, wheat. Uh, I really recommend that you avoid wheat from your um, diet and most grains. Uh, some grains will be fine for some people, like usually white rice uh, is well tolerated and pseudo grains like um, buckwheat or quinoa uh, or amaranth are usually quite well tolerated. If you really want to keep some grains in your diet, 
please watch my videos about anti-nutrients uh, and I explain how to deactivate anti-nutrients to make these grains uh, easier to digest okay so but anyway grains are really not a, a, a you know a food that is um, made for humans you know it, it's, it's really not the easiest food to um, uh, to digest so avoid grains and especially avoid wheat um, as much as you can uh, don't drink alcohol alcohol really irritates your digestive system don't eat legumes legumes are very hard to digest even harder to digest than grains um, it, it's rich in fiber and as we will see fiber is really something to avoid also when you have an irritated colon okay so yeah please avoid legumes uh, for as long as uh, you need um, uh, eliminate sugar and especially refined sugar but you know sugar in general even if it's not refined it's better to eliminate it um, the time that you heal because sugar is just you know empty calories you know that it will deplete your body from nutrients your your body will take uh, vitamins and minerals from its own stores to be able to process uh, this empty thing um, so it will deplete your body from essential nutrients that it needs to heal okay plus sugar uh, feeds dysbiosis and if you have gut issues you certainly have dysbiosis you know it can be candida overgrowth or any other type of dysbiosis and sugar is like the best fuel for uh, pathogens in your gut so it's better to avoid sugar uh, completely while you have gut issues avoid fiber you know eliminate fiber and especially insoluble fiber soluble fiber are fine but insoluble fiber uh, is really something that i recommend that you you completely eliminate um, that's you know the fiber in grains that's the fiber in um in in uh, in legumes in seeds in nuts okay so it's better to avoid this this food generally uh, and also it's the the harsh fibers in fruits and vegetables like in the skin uh, of fruits and vegetables in particular um, so these insoluble fiber are really something to avoid because uh, if you have an inflamed gut, your gut is very sensitive, very inflamed, and these fiber are not digestible. And that is, that's what is a fiber. It's something that is not digested in your body. So it, it, it travels all through your digestive system to your colon undigested. Okay. And because it's quite harsh, it will really uh, like hurt like it will really like kind of scratch your whole digestive system all along if you have a healthy gut that's fine but if your gut is already damaged it will damage it even more so what diet do i recommend uh, i recommend mainly uh, animal foods and vegetable juices okay let me explain so animal foods are digested digested in the upper digestive system okay in the stomach and in the um and, and in the small intestine so you won't have residues or very very little residues getting to your colon where you have your diverticulitis uh, and that's great because you want to avoid irritating your colon with you know food that was not digested in your upper digestive system okay so animal food will get completely digested or almost completely in your upper digestive system so it won't reach your lower digestive system also animal foods are really rich in uh, vitamins uh, minerals uh, amino acids uh, nutrients that your body needs uh, in in a high quantity to be able to repair itself to repair your colon okay um, and amongst animal food i really recommend um i really recommend in particular And among uh, animal food, I really uh, recommend in particular um, liver, you know, and other uh, organ meats uh, because organ meats are very, very easy to digest. Uh, you will see uh, if you eat a piece of liver and you eat a piece of steak, you will see that liver is so easy to chew. It, it almost melts in your mouth, whereas the steak, you know, is harder to chew. Uh, you have to chew it much longer. So... Um, uh, organ meats are so uh, much easier to digest and also they are so much richer 
in uh, vitamins and minerals. And especially liver is very rich in vitamin A and vitamin, vitamin A is essential to heal uh, your, um, um, your gut lining and you know, your tissues in general. Uh, fish and seafood are also a, a great food. Again, they are very easy to digest, very, very easy to digest. And also they are very rich in essential nutrients, not only vitamins and minerals and amino acids, but also in iodine. You know, they are rich also in, in zinc, in vitamin E. Uh, all these things uh, are very important to heal your tissues. Uh, of course, by uh, wild caught fish. Don't buy farmed fish that is always very toxic. Um, bone broth or uh, meat stock. I have a video on each on my channel so please go watch them. I, I won't detail this point too much here but bone broth or meat stock are great because again they are very easy to digest. They are uh, very rich in amino acid and especially in L-glutamine so you don't need to supplement with L-glutamine powder. You know that L-glutamine is great to repair your gut but instead of buying the powder just make uh, bone broth or meat stock and this will really help your body to repair itself, to repair your gut. Uh, and again, it's very easy to digest and it won't make residues that will, uh, you know, cause issues in your colon. Uh, vegetable juices, because I, I still recommend to get some vegetables in your diet, but I prefer to recommend juices instead of whole vegetables. Even if you cook them, they still have fiber that can irritate your gut and that can accumulate in the little pouches, you know, in your col in your colon. So it's just much, uh, much safer to drink vegetable juices. I detail how to make vegetable juices in my course. Uh, so don't use like vegetables like dangerous vegetables like spinach if you use them every day that are rich in oxalates and stuff like that so be careful when you make vegetable juices uh, there's a way also uh, to uh, drink it and don't drink too much at once it can cause nausea or diarrhea so vegetable juices are really great but you need to know what you do okay and, and start slow uh, and intermittent fasting also is great uh, it, it allows more time for your gut to repair itself. So as always, I recommend that you listen to your body first. I have a video on uh, fasting, uh, so please go watch this video. But uh, so I recommend intermittent fasting. Um, I think that if you uh, stop eating processed food for a few weeks, your body will get the right hunger signals again and it will be much easier to uh, do intermittent fasting uh, than if you come from a, a processed food diet okay anyway listen to your body first but i really recommend intermittent fasting to give more time for your gut to rest and and to repair itself heal your upper digestive system as we said before if you have stomach issues if you have liver issues you will have trouble digesting your food okay i have a whole video on gastritis please go watch my video on gastritis if you have gastritis if you have GERD if you have uh, stomach issues i will also make a video about uh, the liver how to heal the liver so when this video is ready please uh, go watch it and um, as i said if you have issues in your upper digestive system you will have issues in your lower digestive system meanwhile uh, you can take enzymes to help uh, with digestions uh, by taking enzymes with your meals it will help you uh, break down uh, your um, uh, food better and to absorb your food better so yeah this is a, an option meanwhile you heal your gut uh, meanwhile you heal your stomach and your liver heal your constipation that is very important as we said if you are constipated you have uh, more accumulation of stool in your colon that will cause more pressure that will cause uh, bacterial overgrowth uh, and um, you know it, it will cause more irritation more inflammation more infection okay so heal uh, that if you have constipation i have a whole video on constipation please go watch this video uh, clean and lubricate your colon okay so you can do enemas uh, because again if we go back here so when you do enemas 
I recommend like just regular enemas, you know, like just either water or water plus salt and you inject that into your colon. So enemas don't go far. Okay. It's not like colonics. The colonics, like they, they go all through your colon and they, they clean your whole colon. Enemas, they only clean like this part of your colon and that's enough. That, that That's great. That's what you need because that's where most people have diverticulitis. And so when the water goes here, it goes in these pouches and it cleans them. You know, it empties them from the food particles and the stool that cause inflammation and pain okay so do enemas to clean your diverti your di diverticulitis okay um so i don't recommend to do enemas all the time i i really recommend that you do an enema like in the beginning when you start doing this protocol uh and you can do an enema like once per week maximum or you know twice a month but i really don't recommend that you do an enema every day because by doing so you will you know flush out the good bacteria in your gut and you know that the good bacteria repair your gut and you will also you know flush out your uh, protective mucus in your colon okay so you don't want that so enemas are great but not every day uh, you can also do oil enemas with something like this. And don't use this, this thing for oil enema. You need something special like a syringe or something like that. Um, and this is great because it will lubricate this part of your colon. So it will make your stool pass much easier. It will protect and nourish your colon. Um, and, and yeah, it will help. Also, if it depends which oil you use. If you use coconut oil coconut oil is a natural mild antifungal antibacterial so it will help also if you have an infection so this can really be great uh, this you can do it more often okay it's uh, before doing these things of course do your own research okay don't start like that like right now and without reading anything about that so do your own research but yeah you can do your uh, you can make your own suppositories also it's very easy to do. You can um, buy like a mold on Amazon and you can make your own suppositories by using uh, coconut oil, for example, or you can mix coconut oil with tea tree oil, for example, tea tree essential oil, or with colloidal silver. And this will help to lubricate your colon, plus it will help to disinfect your colon naturally. Um, you can use aloe vera gel, either you swallow it, either you can also use it um, uh, like internally, like, like a suppository. Uh, again, it will lubricate your colon and it will also actively uh, help to heal, uh, you know, the damaged tissues. Uh, I will talk uh, about that in the next slide. Uh, and here also you can use either slippery elm, either marshmallow root gel that will, uh, again, help lubricate your colon. So your stool will pass easier. It will create a protective film uh you know on your on your colon uh, you can use it either you know drinking it or use it in a colonic in a sorry in a in an enema then repair and disinfect your gut so repair your gut with these things aloe vera gel again i have videos uh, on aloe vera gel so please watch my videos i don't recommend aloe vera gel in a bottle that you buy in a shop no i prefer that you buy the leaf the whole leaf and you extract the gel yourself i explain how to do that in my videos um, you repair your gut with bone broth and uh, and meat stock uh, with msm also and with acerola powder also i have videos on all of these things i have also a video on uh, clay so you can use clay so clay will help to absorb the toxins and to absorb the overgrowth of bacteria or fungi in your gut. It will also help repair your gut. It, 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 it's full of minerals that will help repairing your gut. And also it creates a protective layer um, that will protect you know, your gut from irritation. So clay is great. Just be careful if you are constipated. There are different ways of taking clay. If you are constipated, I prefer to recommend that you take clay uh, before going to bed at night. Uh, so then it won't get mixed with your food during the day. 
Okay, so if you take it that night, it should not give you constipation. But as always, listen to your body first. If ever you feel that it worsens your constipation, stop it. But if you don't, then it's it's a great remedy for diverticulitis. And uh, you can take herbs. Uh, I have several videos on my channel about different herbs, about berberine, about caprylic acid, about oregano essential oil. Herbs will uh, avoid any overgrowth, any infection. Uh, but the good thing about herbs compared to chemicals is that herbs um, don't just kill everything. They don't do that. They actually um, enhance the growth of good bacteria that will help your gut, that will help re uh, uh, repairing your gut. Okay. So you can, you know, also use herbs you know, if you do an enema, you can, you can, you know, make a, a tea from some of the, the herbs and use it in an enema, or you can just swallow different types of herbs. But of course, be careful when you do that. As always, do your own research. And if you are, if your gut is very, very sensitive, maybe using something very strong like oregano essential oil might not be a good idea. And reduce stress. Okay, this is also very important. Um, the most stressful thing in our life in our modern world, I think, is television and radio. You know, it's the news, basically. It's the news. Um, it's really, really stressful. So I really uh, encourage you to stop watching the news or stop listening to the news. Okay? You, you will feel much better <laughs> if you stop listening to the news for several days. Um, stay away from stressful people as much as possible. Uh, do your best to sleep well. Uh, you can supplement with magnesium. I detail how to do that in my course. Uh, you can exercise. Exercising really helps for so many things. You can do yoga. You can do breathing exercise. Uh, just do whatever resonates with you, whatever you know works for you. But at least do two or three of these things, you know, to to help reduce uh, your stress levels. And that's it for today. So as I said, uh, I have a course uh, to heal your gut naturally. I will put the link under this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them under this video or you can ask them in my Facebook group. Uh, the link of my Facebook group will be under this video. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.